Okay, in this video I want to do an exponential growth problem. So there's my lovely website if you want to check it out for a little more organized um, layout of some videos. Um, okay, so let's talk about exponential growth. So remember an exponential equation. In general, re we write that as y equals a times uh, b raised to the t, or sometimes they'll use x instead of t. I like t. Um, to me, it reminds me of time, and that's the context of a lot of um, exponential growth problems. Of course, it doesn't have to be time, but um, for us, it will be in this one. Remember the value of A represents the initial population or the initial amount that you start with. We call the value B the growth factor. We can also write it instead of B inside the parentheses, we can write it as 1 plus R, where R is the growth rate. Okay, so hopefully it's a little refresher. So in this problem, um, it says we've got a bacteria population, we've got 10 bacteria, and they divide every hour. Um, assuming no bacteria die, we want to figure out two things. Part A, we'll figure out what's the population seven hours later, and we would like to know when there's going to be a million bacteria. So, you know, this is a reasonable problem. You know, maybe the bacteria live for a couple weeks, or I don't know how long bacteria lives. Um, maybe this particular type does. Maybe there's plenty of nutrients, um, and so we can expect the population to get pretty big. Okay, so they, we, we say that our bacteria population, um, so we start with um, 10 bacteria. So again, for our equation, we have y equals this a times b to the t, or again, we can write it as y equals a times 1 plus r raised to the t. So our initial population here is going to be 10 bacteria, so that's what I'm going to plug in for the A in my formulas. And again, these are going to be equivalent. I just want to talk about a couple distinctions. So we've got 10 bacteria, okay, so we've used that bit of information. And it says they divide every hour, okay, and we'll remember that none of these bacteria die away. So they divide every hour, okay. So what does that mean, okay? Well, to me, their rate of growth, you want to think about the rate of growth as a percentage, um, the rate of growth per hour. Well, if they divide every hour, you're getting twice as many as what you had before. So we're going to get um, two times as many. So if we get two times as many, that's going to be a growth rate, rate of 100%. Now be careful, a lot of people will say, well, if they're basically if they're dividing in two, it's doubling, and that's a growth rate of 200%, but that's not correct, because, you know, think about if you put money in the bank. If it increases by 0%, what's happened? Well, what's happened is nothing. You've still got your original amount. If it increased by 50%, you would have half um, of your original amount more. And if it increased by 100%, you would have the double your original amount. Okay, so um, our rate of growth is going to be 100%, or we can write that as um, a number. Remember, 100% as a number is 1. And this is going to be our rate of growth, or our growth rate. Okay, so now we know our growth rate, and that's the value that we plug in for R. Okay, so inside the parentheses, if we simplify, we'll get 1 plus 1, or 2 raised to the T. So it says our growth factor, so the growth rate is 100%, or 1, the growth factor is 2. Again, that kind of is telling you that it doubles every hour, which means it grows by 100% every hour. So just two different ways of saying the exact same thing. Okay, well now we've got our equation. I like to use the first one because it's more simplified. So we're almost there now. Usually kind of getting them set up, I think, is one of the tricky things. So part A, it says, what is the population seven hours later? Y represents the total amount, so it says the total amount seven hours later. Well, I have to plug my, um, my t value in as a seven. 
Okay, here's another place where people will sometimes make mistakes, and you have to be careful not to do this. And here you have to remember your order of operations. Some people will make the mistake of multiplying the 10 and the 2, but remember that's not what you want to do. We have to take the value 2 raised to the 7th power. Okay, so make sure you do that first. Make sure you hit your exponent key on your calculator. Again, you don't want 14. We're not multiplying here. We're doing an exponent. Okay, so according to what I get, it says 2 raised to the 7th power. That's going to be 128. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, etc. 7 times. Um, it says 2 to the 7th is 128. Hey, if we multiply that by 10, we just tack on a 0. So it says our bacteria population, if we start with 2, they double every hour. Um, it says 7 hours later, we're going to have a total of 1,200 and 80 bacteria. All right, so that's part A. Um, for part B, we just have to manipulate our equation. To, so to solve part B, we're going to have to use logarithms. Um, if you don't, if you haven't seen logarithms yet, you could always make a little table, but I'm going to do it the exact algebraic way, okay? So, okay, so we need to revisit our equation up here. So now what are we trying to solve for in our equation? We're, we're trying to figure out the, the time. We want to know how much time should expire um, so that we'll get a, a million bacteria. Well, we want um, a million as the final amount, so that's what we'll plug in for our y. We want to get a final amount of one million bacteria, and we have to now solve this for t. Okay, the first thing I would do here is whatever the coefficient is on um, my sort of my base part, basically I'm saying the 10, I get rid of the a value. Okay, so on the right, the tens will just cancel out. We've got 2 to the t left over. Um, you can write it with parentheses or without. It means the exact same thing. So all we need to do is really just cancel out a 0. So instead of 1 million, I'm going to be left with 100,000. Whoops, I'm still writing it as a million. Okay, and now we need to solve this for t. So again, if you haven't seen logarithms, you could just start plugging in values into your calculator. 2 to the 10th, 2 to the 11th, 2 to the 12th and just keep going until you get, eventually you're going to get, um, you'll go from a number a little bit smaller to a number a little bit bigger, and you'll know, okay, maybe it takes between 10 hours and 11 hours, or 17 to 18 hours, but I'm going to do it the, the exact way, and again, to do it the exact way, we introduce um, logarithms. So we could use log base 10, I'm just going to use the natural logarithm. So I'm going to take the natural logarithm of the left side. I'm going to take the natural logarithm of the right side. So I'm just writing this ln in front of both parts. Um, I can compute the natural log of 100,000. So let me do that. So I got the natural logarithm of 100,000 to be roughly equal to 11.5129. Okay, that's as far I think as I'm going to carry that out. Remember, one of the uh, properties of logarithms is we can pull the exponent out front. So this t, he comes out front and then he disappears from the exponent. Okay, again, the natural logarithm of 2 is uh, just a number, so I can divide both sides by that. So I'll divide by the natural logarithm of 2, the natural logarithm of 2. Um, the natural logarithms will cancel out on the right-hand side. And on the right side now, we're simply going to be left with t. Okay. Again, my number on top was 11.5129. I'm going to calculate the va value of the natural logarithm of 2. So let me plug that in my calculator. So ln of 2 is roughly... 0.69 um, 1. I figure I went out to four decimals on the top. I might as well do four decimals on the bottom. So again, completely arbitrary. Um, obviously, if you needed to be more precise in your measurement, you would use more decimals. Um, okay, so finally, we just need to take 11.5129. We'll divide that by our 0.69. 
three one and I'm getting T to be roughly equal to sixteen point six um, one zero seven hours so somewhere between sixteen and seventeen hours um, a little more than sixteen hours and thirty minutes okay since again if it was 0.5 that would be sixteen and a half hours so 0.6 will be a little more than a half hour okay so I hope this makes some sense with the uh, exponential growth problems um, I'll probably do some at least one or two exponential decay problems pretty soon as well so if you need those feel free to uh, look around for them feel free to also post comments and questions um, hopefully either me or some other kind soul out there in the YouTube world can uh, point you in the right direction so alright I hope this helps and good luck out there